Hey, this is Colin Neath and Eileen, the real estate boy, and welcome to Social Media for Real Estate Agents podcast. Today, we got no other than Kenyon Hunter. How you doing, Kenyon? Yo, I'm doing good. Eileen, how you doing, bro? Appreciate you having me on. Nah, no worries, no worries, no worries, man. Listen, why do we have Kenyon on, man? We have Kenyon on because, number one, he was ranked 47 on the property sparks list out of 100 agents. Well, the top 100 agents on Instagram. Let me rephrase that, man. On Instagram, he has over 34,000 followers and his, his uh, average posts get a, around 408 likes. That's on average, man. So this guy is above average. I've been watching him for a long time because we're in the same markets, man. So thanks for coming, man. First and foremost, we want to jump into what you was doing prior to real estate, man. So you can just let us in on your background real fast. Yeah, absolutely, bro. Like, so my story is, um, it's a bit interesting. I, you know, like everybody, like most people and maybe everybody doesn't admit it, but you know, it was a curvy road before I, I got to real estate. So I, I grew up in Trent, New Jersey. And, uh, you know, the dream was it, where I grew up was, you know, go to school, go to college. That was a big goal. So I did, I kind of did that standard route, uh, when I was young. So went to college in North Carolina at UNC Greensboro. Then I, I transferred over to Morgan state in Baltimore, shout out to the Morgan state bears and the UNCG Spartans, but um, went to college. And after college, bro, I didn't know what I wanted to do, right? I was always a good business person. I was always in uh, the sales world. So like when I was in high school, you know, I played sports, but I worked at Circuit City selling cell phones. And then in college, I worked at CarMax selling cars part-time. So the first thing I did when I got out was I worked at a bank and I got into the mortgage world. And that was kind of my first foray in real estate. We, we talking like 2000, 2003 or so. Um, and I was like, man, this real estate stuff is, is, is wild, right? I saw these cats pulling up to the mortgage companies and realtors riding around in the Porsches and, and all types wow. of, of cars down there in Baltimore. And I was like, okay, cool. So I got into the mortgage side of it. And as you know, that was back in the big subprime days. And for me right. personally, you know, doing the subprime mortgages was just not, um, it was great money. And I, I saw, you know, around the office, everybody making money, kind of living, living good, but Morally, the, the whole subprime market really wasn't for me, right? I really just wasn't really into what they were doing and, and not, nothing to knock it. It was just, it was what it was back then. But mm -hmm. um, so I left, I got out of, I got out of um, the mortgage side and just went into, uh, I was still working in banking, but then me and a couple of friends, we started investing in Baltimore. We was flipping houses and just running around doing real estate. And then 2008 happened. And when 2008 happened, everything kind of crashed. And uh, things had to change. I was young still, so it was just like, man, you know, this is crazy. I was having fun in this in this crazy economy we were in. And uh, in 2008, I got into the tech world. So I started off at AT and T, worked uh, my way up into the enterprise space. So I worked for uh, the tech world for from 2008 through 2018. I still dibble and dabble in the tech world today, uh, mainly with startups because I just love technology and what it can do for our lives. But uh, worked at you know AT and T, then you know, Microsoft, IBM, and then it was right around um, like I think I want to say maybe 2016, Khalid. I somebody my, uh, actually one of my buddies, one of my buddies was working at KW down in Baltimore at a Keller Williams, right? And he told me he was like, "Bro, you should get your real estate license." I was like, "Nah, man, I don't really like dealing with real estate agents like that." I was like, "I never really like the way they do business. Most real estate agents are lazy. They're always late." Cause I bought how I bought homes. So I, I, my experience with real estate agents was, you know, they're not the most business savvy and professional people. It's just one of those things that people get into. They think it's cool. And I picked up the um, uh, millionaire real estate agent book. Right. And I read that book by Gary Keller. And then that showed me a different side. I was like, wow, you know, so what my boy was telling me about was you can start like an organization. And mm -hmm. for me coming from corporate America, that was intriguing because I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to own my own business. So real estate, as you know, um, if when it, you're owning your business and it's a very uh, low, it's low overhead and quite frankly, it's a low barrier of entry to get into it. Right. And for, for not low barrier of entry from an education standpoint, but it's from a lot of different angles, it's a low barrier to start a business. So I said, all right, well, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to get in real estate, get my license, went to the, the New Jersey classes and got it. They got my PA license and that's what got me into real estate, bro. And I, I, I was a dual career agent because I was still working in the tech world. I was working at IBM full time and then trying to build you know, my real estate career. And thankfully, I scaled pretty quick just because I was hustling. I was out there just doing everything, man. I was door knocking, cold calling, calling oh, wow. expireds, 
Um, I already had a social media following because um, I used to be a big sneakerhead. So that uh, kind of get got me a decent. I, so I knew my way around social media. And at, at this point, you know, algorithms and stuff have changed so much these days. But okay. back then, you know, it was all about hashtags and things like that. So, uh, yeah, man, that's how I got started. Awesome, man. So, wow, that's that's crazy because you say you're from Trenton. I had a business meeting in Trenton long ago. This is like network marketing, maybe like 20 years ago. Ah. And, <laughs> and um, let's just say a person who was um, abusing substance came to the meeting. Oh. <laughs> I was just like, listen, where man, you am I at? <laughs> Let me get out of here. Yo, listen, you from Philly. You know Trenton, man. Look, that's my town. I love it to death. But uh, and I, look, I, I wouldn't change it for the world. Growing up in Trenton definitely, you know, built me and, and gave me a lot of character. But uh, what you're saying is not uncommon. <laughs> I, I would you like, know, I, Jersey or, or, or am I in North Philly? Let me dude, hurry up and get out of here because there was definitely a whole lot of similarities. And, and listen, I grew up right in the middle of, of North Trenton, right off Martin Luther King Boulevard. And you know, they only put Martin Luther King Boulevard in places that need to have some pride in that name for some strange right. reason, right? They always do that. But um, yeah, man, my, but you know, like I said, I attribute my childhood and growing up in, I mean, you grow up in the city, man, you grow up different. You grow up a lot faster. Yes, um, you, do. you tend to grow up a lot tougher. I mean, sometimes like I got three kids. Sometimes I think about like, you know, obviously we want to give our kids a good life. But I'm like, man, sometimes I just wish I can send my kids to my <laughs> grandma house for the summer in Trenton and just let them, <laughs> you know, let them feel a little bit, let them grow a little bit. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. And, <laughs> and that's funny that, that you say that because the, the other day I kind of asked my mom, I said, uh, during the during the weekdays and the weekends, we were just outside. There was no you cell phones, were. no anything. And we were just outside all day. I said, man, I want to know where my kids at, even if they're in the house. At all so times. It's like, <laughs> it's like, what were you doing during those times? Like, you just didn't <laughs> know where we were at. <laughs> For real. Like, we didn't, nobody, our parents didn't check on us. We could be going all day long, right? Right. Nowadays, I don't care where I'm at. I don't let my kids out my sight, man. Like, right. you turn on the news and you got, like, people, uh, you know, trying to jack people's kids right from their shopping carts at, at, at Walmart or, or you know, places like that. It's just like, what's the world coming to? So it's different. Like, you know, I, I would love for my kids to go outside and experience life the way we did it. Unfortunately, right. I, just, I just I can't come to terms with it. They can't these days. We live in a different world. Right. I got to protect my myself more than anybody somehow right. to, to, to them, you know, but that's crazy. Absolutely. But okay. So you're there, like you said, went to college, uh, went in the tech world, um, buying and selling homes, well, buying and selling homes first, tech world, and then you got a hold of that book. Um, and then yeah. you went to, so I guess the, the uh, first brokerage you joined was KW down in Baltimore? No, I actually joined KW. I was living here in New Jersey. I was okay. living in South okay. Jersey. So I joined KW Cherry Hill. So, um, and, and then I was, I guess it was KW Cherry Hill. And then I had my PA license. I used to frequent KW Philly, but I'm not sure if I was a, I, didn't, I don't think I was a part of that brokerage. Though. I just think that KW Cherry Hill must have had a license in, uh, the, whoever owned the franchise was licensed in PA too. So okay. um, I started there. I was at KW for, um, I guess about two and a half, three years. And then I went over to Compass in 2019. Uh, I took my team over to Compass. That's another thing too. I've never been a solo agent. I started a team right away. So okay. the minute I walked into KW, I remember telling the broker, like I'm starting a team. He was like, hey, you're a new agent. How are you gonna start a team? I'm like, listen, <laughs> I, read the, I read the red book. I'm a business person. It's not rocket science. It's, it's just, you know, if you have business savvy, organizational skills, leadership skills, it's, it's, not, it's not hard, right? Um, cause I think, I do think that real estate has traditionally been a little bit behind the eight ball as far as business structure, um, yeah. as far, and then tech, obviously most real estate is getting into technology real heavy now, but they're probably about 10 years behind when it comes to technology, right? Um, mm -hmm. cause real estate should have been leveraging technology, uh, 10 years ago or 15 years ago even, but mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, it's, it's starting to be more and more, uh, compelling to, to implement technology in the real estate now. So for me, it was a, a win-win, right? Coming from the tech world and then loving real estate loving people, loving right. helping people. And even more importantly, um, I love helping other agents help people because that helps you help more, help me help more people, right? Through agents right. as well. So joined Keller, went to Compass, uh, spent two years and some change at Compass and recently joined EXP. As you know, we're in the same, we're in the same group. Shout out to the Wolfpack. Wolfpack um, maybe. We um, joined EXP in J January. So my whole team came over and, and since that we've been growing in in you know central south jersey and the greater philadelphia area and it's been it's been pretty awesome man. okay i think you had because uh, i was at compass too at one point in time oh you were yeah 
That was that company. You? Okay, okay. What, you, were you working out of uh, Center City or Armour? Where were you at? No, um, Manioc. Oh, okay, okay. Got you. you were you on the team? Yeah, I was on um, uh, Joe Joe's team. What was Joe's last Herzog? name? Herzog? No, Joe. Oh, man, I can't remember. Smogart. Okay, Joe okay, Smogart. yeah. Okay, got you, yeah, got you. I was on there. So, um, yeah. but you're on Compass. Um, you come to EXP, but now let's get into the social media part of it. Gotcha. Is that something that, like you said, you were kind of savvy in it already from being a sneakerhead? From what I know, most sneakerheads, they put on their sneakers, yeah. uh, take out their camera, shoot it, and then that's kind of it. Did you have anything else playing in there? Yeah, so, I mean, what people used to be attracted to from the sneaker and, like, the fashion tip was always, like, exclusivity, right? So, like... um I I was I I, I love going to Lapstone and Hammer out, out in Philadelphia on Chestnut. Um, mm -hmm. Shout out to my man Brian, the owner. And um, it was crazy because one of my closest friends used to be one of the store managers. So the first time I ever walked in, I was in one of their raffles. I won the raffle, got a pair of kicks, and um, obviously I had a great relationship with them. So you know I started going there all the time, and uh, you know all the you know a lot of exclusive kicks. I would I would get them right because I was you know VIP over there, right? So I would get them. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, for social media back then, if you are the first person to have that latest Jordan drop or you got it because people wait in line or people, you know, they, they're not getting them online. So everybody bugging. And then you, the person, you know, sitting back posting, you know, Saturday morning while you're online, I already got them. Uh, you know, that was popular. <laughs> right. So um, and, and back then, like I said, the algorithms on uh, social media was pretty simple. It was hashtags. It was popularity and all that kind of stuff. And uh but it wasn't my following wasn't nowhere near what it is now when right. once I got to real estate. Uh, because the beauty thing about real estate is everybody loves real estate, everybody's interested in it, right? So right. once I got into real estate and I started even pushing the envelope even further with the, the lifestyle, the culture, and, and fashion and implementing that, I also realized that people didn't want to see a bunch of posts about real estate, but other realtors and clients or prospective clients, what they wanted to see was lifestyle, right? They wanted mm -hmm. to see you know, how do you, what does your day-to-day -day look like? What's, what's, what's real about you? What are you into? And then people that are into the same things you're into, I always say your vibe attracts your tribe. Those are the people that are going to start following you and become, you know, fans of your, your Instagram or, or now it's TikTok too. And uh, even Facebook, I, and I find Facebook a good place to kind of touch your sphere pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Facebook, to me, I use Facebook like a CRM. Facebook is pretty much, that's exactly what it is. Facebook's like a CRM. I don't really use it for, you know, entertainment purposes. It's more of a, a CRM. But uh, Instagram, TikTok, uh, you know, obviously Snapchat had, had there, some people are Snapchat users, even LinkedIn. These are all places where you can engage with people. And we're in this time in life where we have such an advantage. If you were a realtor 20 years ago, of course, you had to go knock on doors, right. get, have a yellow book at your desk and be calling and do all types of things. And now we can do so much right from the click of a button, right? We can touch right. a thousand people just by one or two clicks, which is which is awesome. So I think that you know, it's a um, it's an amazing time to be alive. It's an amazing time to do business because of social media. Social media, regardless of its pitfalls, right? Because like like you said, we got kids. I don't always want my kids on every social media app. Right. And I kind of I kind of like to monitor what they do. If I eat, I don't even let my kids on yet. But um, it, it has its pitfalls. But if you use it for the right reasons, if you're very intentional about how you use social media, right. then I, I think it, it's 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 a wonderful tool. Now, I was looking at your Instagram and I don't know if you can pinpoint this, but there's a there's a point. I don't know what happened. And this is what I wanted to ask you. And I didn't want to ask you beforehand because I wanted your first reaction. Sure. Is that there's like a, a, a you took a picture of like a, um, a Lamborghini, a white Lamborghini. But right before that, I'm looking at your pictures and I'm seeing a hundred likes. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing a 50 likes or like nine likes. But then from that point on, it's like a thousand likes. And it's, there's a, a huge jump. Something happened. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, all right, I'm going to ask him about this. What happened that it seemed like from one picture to the next, things just got like 10x? Yeah. So the whole point of social media now is you kind of got to go viral. Right. You got to go viral. And it's a couple different ways to go viral. A shock value. Right. Shock mm -hmm. value makes you go viral. Right? right. So before I think on my Instagram, it was like, all right, I'm posting some kicks. I'm posting like little things here and there. Things that, you know, look, people that know me might be interested in, but not the not not the masses. Right. And then 
when you start posting something with shock value, like I, I never forget, I posted a video on another Instagram account. This is how I realized how to do it, right? Remember, um, what's the dude that sings the song Panda? Uh, I forgot his name. Um, you know who I'm yeah, talking about, though. Yeah, they talking about whatever his name was, right? He had an acapella version that of, of some song he was singing, right? And it was dope, right? So I posted that on this other Instagram I had with this previous company that I had started, right? It was a lifestyle branding company. And I posted that on my Instagram just because I liked it. I was like, man, this acapella version. I, 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 you know, I, I, I wasn't a big fan of dude, but I was like, let me post yeah. this. I posted it and it got like 25,000 likes, right? And I was like, all right, here I am purposely posting marketing material or lifestyle stuff. And it's cool, it was getting a couple hundred. But then I posted that and it just went viral. That, so that was my first time realizing that you have to go viral, right? So it has to be something that's so appealing. And I found the song, the clip or whatever, and I posted the video. And just how I felt about it, like, yo, this joint is crazy. This is dope. Everybody apparently thought it was dope. And it kept getting, um, uh, and I wasn't using hashtags before. So earlier when you see like like the, the, the low likes or early on my page, I wasn't using hashtags. I didn't know what they meant. I was like, what are hashtags for? I'm I'm putting like one hashtag. Like if I'm at, you know, uh, Wawa, I'm like, yeah, Wawa sandwich, hashtag Wawa, right? Mm -hmm. But back then, I didn't know that you had to put 30 hashtags on, right? And 30 popular hashtags. So that's why if you go back, and it's changed now, because now I think it's like five hashtags mm -hmm. that are attractive, not 30. But nowadays, too, it's not even about um, still pictures no more. Everything is about reels, TikTok. Right. It's about video, right? YouTube, right. as you know. But back then, it was easier because if I put, um, you know, hashtag Nike, hashtag Jordan 1, hashtag exclusive, hashtag love, hashtag New Jersey, hashtag LA, and all those hashtags are used 1.5 million times, 7 million times, then I'm popping up in the Explore page. So that was the other part that really changed it for me was for some reason, once I started hashtagging, my post started popping up in the Explore page. So you know, mm -hmm. so when you pop up in the, in the Explore page, guess what? Everybody gets on Instagram, get they open that Explore page, and guess whose face is on there? Or guess whose picture of that Lambo is on there? It's mine now because every mm -hmm. Lamborghini lover or every watch lover, every mm -hmm. you know uh, Jordan 1 lover, every Rolex lover, whatever it is that I got on, every person that shops at Lapstone and Hammer, whatever it is, they're all like seeing me on the Explore page. Now. And then if you notice my page, you can also, if you really dig into my page, you'll see where my aesthetic of my page changed, right? Right. Where right. it was just no organization, a bunch of just right. pictures of random stuff. And then it became like, like right now, if you go in, I have red quotes down the middle. Right. And then when you really examine my page, you'll notice it's usually me, house, car, quote. Uh, then it, it just, I keeps repeating that, but it keeps that aesthetic. So now my page has a, a beautiful aesthetic. So when people link go to my page, first they notice the aesthetic of the page, like, oh, wow, this is a clean looking page, right? It also has a big motivational vibe on my page, right? So I have a theme. My page is, is very theme. My grid is purposely like that. So that's why it's always in order. So when I post pictures, I post, probably I'm always gonna post three to four pictures at a time because I don't wanna mess up my theme, right? Mm -hmm. And I still post myself. I don't use like a marketing person. Um, I don't use like a, 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 a app that posts for me because I'm very authentic with my posts, right? It's how yeah. I'm feeling in the moment or if I'm having a great time walking down the street in Center City or, or Rittenhouse Square and I catch a moment, then I'm planning on how I'm, I'm going to post that moment. Then what car am I going to post? What house am I going to post? What quote am I going to post that kind of matches that energy for that? So that's the whole approach, man. And, and so I think it's about going viral, obviously um, having some type of shock value, engagement too so the one thing i didn't do on instagram prior to you know having a really big page was when you engage on other people's pages they always come back to your page they'll shout you out to their followers and you never know like i was getting uh people who had three hundred thousand followers reposting wow. me on their instagram mm. so imagine the exposure i'm getting when they're posting me and then all their people are coming like i was getting like there were days where i was just like wow i got a thousand new followers today mm. right I don't care about them because some of them, right. from, I don't know what they're, they're from out of the country. Um, right. I don't care about the follower count. Not the, I, I care about the followers as people, but mm -hmm. the count didn't matter. Um, it was just interesting. Like I had people from uh, like South America following me. It was just like, wow, that's cool. 
And I'm like, wonder why they're following me. Come to find out, they would DM me and be, and they would talk. Uh, I don't speak Spanish that well, right? And they would DM me in Spanish, and I would go to the translator, and I would say, oh, I know I was Espanol. They're like, oh man, we thought you were uh, Dominican, right? Or uh, we thought you we thought you were, you know, you might have been Colombian. And I'm like, oh no, right. I'm not, right? But they were relating to me because just right. the way I look. They're like, oh yeah, we thought you might have been from here or whatever, whatever. So it was it was pretty cool, bro. But it was like, you know, when you relate to people and you actually engage with people, that's when you see your your page just, just climb. What I don't know, and I'm I'm constantly trying to figure it out, or at least I talk to a lot of other people that are big on social media now, is the engagement when it comes to like the new, the new algorithms, which are mostly based on reels and TikTok and and, and right. video. Um, cause like, I think it takes a while to build the following now. And I think it takes a while, like YouTube, I have a YouTube channel. Um, you know, my Instagram following doesn't translate to my YouTube channel because it takes, not everybody is on YouTube subscribing every right. day. Right? right. So how do you get more people to come to your YouTube channel and decide to look at that? Like I look at Eric Thomas every single day on okay. YouTube. I listen to Eric Thomas. So now I'm trying to figure out, well, all right, I'm not putting out as much content as Eric Thomas yet, but if I was, how do I get that content to be as uh, captivating as his to people, at least my audience, right? Right. I mean, uh, just from my research, as far as to do that, um, like just crossing platforms, um, number one is being intentional about it as far as telling your viewers to, hey, go view this over here or by making um, making content to where when you're on, when you're doing a reel, do a short part of it and then refer people to, hey, go to my YouTube where you can see the rest of the content, where whatever that is. But um, looking at your page, it does seem like you have professional pictures. Is that something that you've been doing recently or that's something that you've always uh, been doing? So I started doing that um, probably a couple of years ago. And I, you know, what I realized was, and I was, some, and, you know, I look, I took a lot of social media courses. And I've, you know, collaborated and masterminded with a lot of other social media uh, people, like whether real estate, sales, whatever, marketing. And, you know, one thing I do know is it's just like real estate, bro. Like, you know how if you take a, if you take pictures of your house with a, with a phone, and they're mm. dark, they're not professional. Mm. It's not the most captivating pictures, right? And people, you know, I, I look at those pictures. I, that's the first thing I point out when I look at a listing. Like, oh, these are not even professional pictures, right? right? But you get a professional photographer to come in. They take the pictures. They edit them. The lighting is right. The, the staging is right. The positioning is right. It's, it's just appealing. And more people are going to want to come see that house. So same thing with Instagram. If you just have a bunch of selfies on there or um, even if you just have a bunch of pictures of other people's, you know, stuff that you stole from their Instagram, it's cool, but I think when you have authenticity, I think when you have professional pictures, and look, these iPhones these days, Google Pixels, whatever, they take amazing pictures. So right. you can get quality pictures, but you have to make sure you take the time to make sure the quality of the picture is good. Uh, edit, you use editing software, make sure lighting is good because naturally lighting is all like I don't even have. I've got to put my ring light on right now, so I don't even have my mm -hmm. ring light on. I just remember. Uh, that I didn't put, turn it on. So, you know, I have a little bit of a shadow. But if I was doing like a YouTube video or uh, or normally, if I remember, it's also hot in here, but if I remember, I would have my ring light flashing on me right now too, right? Just because the lighting is right. But right. I think professional pictures do make a big difference just like everything else. You know, it's like if you are selling apparel and, you know, a lot of people sell apparel. If you just had a bunch of cell phone pictures that are just not, they don't have any professionalism to them at all, or you hire a photo versus hiring a photographer that takes great pictures, great lighting, captures the colors, captures the moment. Your website's gonna look way better than somebody who doesn't have professional pictures. Yeah, and I, um, and out of all the platforms, I think like Instagram is probably my worst platform. <laughs> um, and I think that's something that I need to do as far as this take it to take it to the next step um, with them is start doing professional pictures um, because I just haven't. Um, I yeah. just haven't done professional pictures at all. And um, I keep telling myself to do them every quarter. I just haven't put one foot in front of the other to get out there and um, do the professional pictures. But as far as um, as far as the different content that you're using, like you said, you're doing, I guess it's one of you, one of a card, one of a house, and then a quote. Right. Um, yeah, because I think what happens is if you have a page and it's kind of all over the place, mm -hmm. It, it, and no organization it doesn't it's not very appealing to people right mm -hmm. people like a theme like you follow certain people because you know what you're getting from those people mm -hmm. and 
there's something about the people you follow that you relate to, right? It's your type of vibe. Like, for instance, I follow uh, Biggs Burt, right? You know, you know, uh, Kareem Big Burt from uh, okay. started Rockefeller with Jay Z and Dan yeah. Dash. You know, all he does is put those black and white quotes up, right? And his page is captivating because one, the, the quotes are pretty dope, but you know what you're getting, and it's very organized, right? You just mm. all, all it is is those quotes. Or if you're a car person, you follow a car page because you know they're going to put great cars on their page that you want to mm-hmm. see if you were uh, uh into sneakers or fashion you follow different fashion houses and all that kind of stuff because you know what they're going to put out there so when you're consistent then you're going to have a consistent following but you also have to be consistent in, in content as well right so i make sure my content is consistent and it's consistent with me right it's authentic to who i am like i don't follow trends where okay i'm not really into that but i'm gonna post it just because because it is not going to flow with the rest of my content, right? So my right. content is always going to be very lifestyle based. It's always going to be the things I like, right? It's going to be fashion, cars, cool homes, and positivity and good energy, right? So I I kind of just stick to that mold. Okay. Now, getting reach and getting exposure is one thing. Converting is another. What are you doing as far as to translate those eyes and that attention into signed contracts or agents? Yeah. So from the agent standpoint, I mean, if you want to be a real estate agent, you're probably going to want to just like anything. If you if you love basketball, then there's there's players you look up to. you got a favorite player or you got players that you want to be like, whether it's NBA stars, whether it's college stars, even locally. Right. You know, when I was growing up as a kid, there were local athletes that you you know, look, Mm -hmm. man, I want to be around that person. Right. Like Mm -hmm. I want to be cool with that person because, you know, I want to be the next quarterback at, at Trenton High or I want to be the next point guard. At, at, at such and such high school, at Simon Gratz, whatever it is, right? So you want to be around, well, who's the point guard now, right? Because I believe that you should associate yourself with people that are doing what you want to do, achieving the success you want to achieve, and living a lifestyle similar to the lifestyle you want to live, right? That's the only shortcut that exists in life, right? People always say, oh, there's no shortcut to success. Well, the only shortcut to success is to align yourself with people that are you know, uh, reaching the amount of success that you want to reach because, you know, you're not going to go to the gym and work with a trainer that's not in shape, right? right. Or you're not going to hire a, a dietitian that's, that eats <laughs> terrible, right? That's <laughs> fact, right? You don't, I mean, you're just not going to do that. So right. for me, with, when it comes to agent attraction, I believe that most agents, they vibe with me, right? They see how I'm moving. They see, you know, obviously I, I've been successful, uh, but maybe they're into some of the same things I'm into. Maybe they're like, yo, like I'm into cars. Oh, I'm into fashion. I'm into watches. Or I'm a dad. He's a dad. You know, things like that. So I think that that's a big part about agent traction. And then even for uh, contracts and getting and getting clients and leads, right, or, 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 you know, potential new leads, I think people do the same thing, right? If you see me on, if you're a person looking to buy or sell a home, you want to work with somebody that you can relate to or right. you, you find professional but I think people like working with people they like and people like to buy from people they like and just do right. business with people they like. It's just a better, excuse me, it's just a better overall uh, um, exchange or transaction or experience. So I think that people reach out to me for a number of reasons when it comes to if they're buyers or they're sellers, because they probably see me as one, okay, he's a real estate agent. Two, has he been successful? Okay, I think he, based on what I see or maybe some research I did, he's successful. And three, he seems like somebody I would want to spend time with because remember, real estate is a is somewhat of an intimate experience, right? We spend a, we can spend a lot of time with our clients. Um, we get to know our clients. We know each other's families. We talk about families. Right. Um, the financial right, information too. Financial information, right? You got to be right. comfortable being honest with me about things, and so right. we can make you know, so we can make this work. So I think that um, when you think about you know why people would go on Instagram or go on Facebook and say, "Wow, I really want to work with you." is because ultimately they dig what you're doing, right? They dig that, you know, you're, you're into certain things or, oh, well, we're a young family coming over to New Jersey from Philly, moving out the city. And you were, you seem like a young family living in New Jersey. You know, what's your experience with that? So I think there's so many things that, you know, we can attribute to why people engage. But ultimately, I think people are always going to want to engage when you're authentic, when there's a lot of like interest. And at the end of the day, People don't want to be sold. People really do want to work with people that they like, and that's the people they want to have a, a, an amazing experience with. 
Right. And I think, and I mean, I find myself saying this on every podcast episode is that it needs to be more than just buy and sold signs right. on your page. People need to show their personality and um, show some, not saying put all your business on there because it, if it's messy, then keep it at home. Right. But, um, <laughs> show, their, Absolutely. Show, their, show their interests and um and sometimes be a little v- vulnerable because i, I do so. see a, a lot of times that's what that what goes viral um is when people are vulnerable um you're looking on the page and it's like eh, i probably wouldn't have let that cat out the bag but they got a million views on this so right. it's just kinda, you know what I mean? it's kind of like yeah Okay, but um, <laughs> <laughs> um, technical wise, um, I guess what type of tools are you using, um, to increase your social media presence? Yeah, so um, you know, one thing we talked about was uh, quality of pictures and quality of content. I think your content has to have quality. So a lot of times when I'm recording uh, on YouTube, you know, I use a, a Sony uh, A6400 camera. So I use a real camera to to record video. Um, I use an Elgato 4K cam link, so the quality of the video comes in really good. Even I'm using a MacBook right now, and I think the the, the Facebook FaceTime camera is pretty good now on, on your MacBook. So, I mean, you can use stuff like that. Um, if you use your phone, just shoot it in 4K. Uh, you know, like I said, the iPhone and some of the tools we have right at our, our fingertips are amazing, amazing tools these days. Right. Um, obviously, a professional microphone is always going to enhance the, the audio quality. Of, of, of your recordings and your video, uh, using a professional photographer, you know, to because I don't always want to take selfies. I don't always want to use a, you know, I have a tripod and you can use timers and things like that. So I think those things are good too. But I think those are the basic tools. I, I don't think you need a lot, right? Honestly, you know, you know, like Sum and Kim, right? In our in our group at the Wolfpack. I mean, he started off doing those home tours with a phone, a probably a microphone you can get off Amazon to, you know, clip to your, your collar. Um, and you know whatever software you want to download it to whether it's just your, your video or whatever but you don't need a lot you don't need a lot of equipment you don't have to spend a lot of money you can use your phone get a tripod get a selfie stick um invest in some type of, of, of audio enhancement tool like a microphone or whether it's one of these microphones or one of the ones that clip onto you that clips on you know bluetooth to your to your phone that's all you really need to get started just to get some quality out there and then i don't think there's anything wrong with it's like you said Authenticity is important. So yeah, sometimes you do want to just take selfies while you're out touring a house. Sometimes you want to catch a selfie at a festival because you want to feel in the moment as well. Mm -hmm. And that's what people want to see at the end of the day. Like it's like you said earlier, that's what I was going to get to was when, when you see a lot of agents, all they do is post sold signs. All they do is post numbers. Nobody cares about that really, but other agents, right? Right. Because clients (laughs) don't. I mean, clients right. don't know what those numbers mean. They don't. They don't really right. care. I mean, I don't right. know if I ever had a client that said, "The reason why I called you is because, boy, it looks like you sell a lot of real estate, right? right. Based on your post telling me you sell a lot of real estate, <laughs> right? Never had anybody say that before. What people right. say is, man, you know, I, I reached out to you or I DM'd you or I messaged you because you seem really cool. And I want to. I want to know if you can. You know, we can work together, right? Because they like something. They like you know that I'm coaching my son's baseball or they like that man you're 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 a dad a busy dad too or whatever it is they find commonalities in that so um yeah i think you know but wrapping up you know circling back around tools wise you don't you don't need much but you just have to you know take your time and put good quality content together gotcha um because you mentioned some physical tools um as far as online tools are you using anything as far as like a um uh, social media scheduler or what type of, even yeah. if you do take pictures, are there any filter apps that you do use? Like, are there any special apps that you use? Yeah. So I, I don't use any social media schedule. I just post when I want to post, right. I do it myself. Um, I, I you know, I, I had tried to use a uh, Hootsuite before. Um, there was another one. I forgot what it was called. That was like, kind of like, you can like post, like I can do like, eight, 10 posts and just schedule them all. So Mm -hmm. I don't have to do it. I can just do it for the next two weeks if I wanted to. Um, But I never really, I never really used it. I just felt better just doing it myself. Uh, As far as editing tools. So a couple of things I use, um, I use iMovie for a lot of my movies, right on my MacBook, right? To edit, I'll use iMovie, Uh, OBS Studio. I'll take videos and and, uh, directly stream it or record it on OBS Studio so I can do video and audio at the same time because I never really got good at 
doing a video and audio and then linking it together. That's just, I just never did that. So OBS Studio um, makes it easy and it's free. Um, It's an open source uh, 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 recording and streaming service. And I think a lot of gamers like use it. So OBS Studio was cool. As far as uh, picture editing, I mean, you can, once again, nowadays between Instagram and even your iPhone, there's so many, the editing tools on there are pretty amazing, right? So yeah. everybody can become an editor. I mean, look at some of the elaborate TikTok videos and reels people are making just off their phone. No right. fancy equipment, no nothing. I'm not good at some of that stuff. I, I still don't understand how people make these reels and TikTok videos with four different outfits and four different locations. And it's like a full production, right? I haven't right. got good with that. But you can do so much right from your fingertips. Right. Uh, one app that I do like just for like, you know, let's say I'm taking pictures of my kids or I'm out, you know, I'm not really paying attention to lighting. Uh, Lightroom is a cool app. You can, you know, brighten mm-hmm. stuff up. You can, you know, yeah, I think on Lightroom, they even have where you can, like, I can get rid of this background if I wanted to mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, another good app that I use for video, like short videos, is uh, Splice. I don't know if you ever Splice. heard of that one. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's a great uh, mobile video app um, that you can, it's, yeah, it's this S right here. You can um, edit videos right from there. You can put mm-hmm. transitions and all that kind of stuff. You can fade out, add music. So, and it's all it's all mobile. So if I do make a video on my phone, or even when I make a YouTube video, and I want to cut it into smaller clips to put on Instagram or, or TikTok, I'll do it on Splice. I'll take the YouTube video, put it on Splice, break it up, add music, add captions, and all that kind of stuff to it. Now, how's your um, how's your TikTok journey going? Haven't really do- dove into TikTok real heavy yet. Um, okay. I know I need to. It's one of those things where I know I need to get into it because TikTok mm-hmm. is very, um, it, it's 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 pretty big. It's, it is big right now, right? right. Um, and I see a lot of uh, business professionals using it. Um, I admire their craftsmanship with it. <laughs> like I said, I have not mastered the whole changing scenes, and you know, I see people like they'll they'll do the that and they'll right. be somewhere else and all that kind of sure. stuff. I, I just sure. I've not tried it yet. But I, I know I need to get into it. Uh, right now, my focus, I, I pretty much stay consistent on Instagram. And I'm trying to build my YouTube presence because, um, you know, one of the biggest things for me is, is motivational purposes always, right? You get on my Instagram, that's the first thing you'll see on my bio. Um, I just like to give information to help people, right? So right. Um, the production stuff is cool. And that, I'm sure that works for some people. But for me, I, I'm really looking to just really give information out and really help people. Um, enrich their lives and empower their lives some kind some kind of way. And I think that's my gift, right? My gift is my voice, and and that's why you know YouTube is a great platform for me because I enjoy speaking, I enjoy motivational speaking, I enjoy just leadership and empowering people and, and helping people. So I base most of my uh, social media around that, right? It's just mm-hmm. I'm here to motivate you. I'm here to help you take it to the next level. If you're in real estate, I'm here to help you take your career to the next level. I'm here to help you become a star. If you're in sales in general. Any kind of way I can use my experience or, or, or help you and encourage you to, to, to become the best version of yourself. That's what I'm here to do. So um, that's probably the reason why I haven't gotten to TikTok that much because I just feel like it is a very, uh, it's a production. And maybe it's not. Maybe somebody will teach me and they'll say, oh, man, it's not a, as much as a production as you think. This is how I do it, right? And I probably right. need to take, take that and figure it out. But, uh, but yeah, man, are yeah. you on TikTok? Uh, yeah, I am. I mean, have that's... You know? That's that's probably my best platform. Mm. Um, so I can definitely, you know, what I mean, sometimes show you. I gotta follow you on there. Yeah, yeah I don't uh, even go on TikTok much to be honest with you. I, I, uh, I'm not like you know, Instagram and Facebook are so habitual because you've been I've been using them for the past mm-hmm. twelve years or however long it's been. Where you know, every day I'm just like, oh, boom, Instagram, boom, boom. TikTok, I, I like I don't browse it. I never browse TikTok, right? I just don't, right? Because I like so when I first got on TikTok, I was like, well. Instagram is cool because I can kind of control what I see and mm-hmm. it, the algorithm control can knows like, okay, show me a lot of old school BMWs, right? Okay. BMWs, right? Or show me, you know, Allen Iverson, make sure his, make sure AI's uh, posts always pop up. Instagram automatically does that where my experience at first with TikTok, maybe it's changed and maybe you can tell me my experience at first with TikTok was I get on there and it's just random videos, right? I, that I don't really, some of them I didn't care to see, right? Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> teenagers doing crazy stuff. I'm like, I'm not into that. But uh, I'm assuming maybe they changed it. Yeah, no, it it definitely does. I mean, with uh, TikTok, there's there's uh, two different categories. One is following, 
So it, it shows you the video of all people that you're following. And then it's one that's more of like a um, exploration page where the algorithm is showing you things that you have interest in. Okay, so um, similar to, to like Instagram. Right, right, right. So um, it's a definitely not, um, I mean, the first, my first TikTok I did, which was a while back, took me four hours. But wow. now, <laughs> that was the first time. After that, you know what I mean? You kind of get the hang of it. And it had become just like they say, second nature, um, like Instagram is to you now. So, and then now what most people are doing, because with Instagram, um, are you doing reels now with Instagram? I am. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So typically when I make a YouTube video, I, I cut that up and I make that, that becomes a TikTok video, becomes a reel, goes to my story, so on. Yeah. So it's, it's a picture. So are you, are you making the picture a video? Um, have you ventured into doing videos? Just what do you, what do you mean? Uh, because it sounded like you were saying that you took, you take the pictures and then you'll, you'll put them in some type of app and then make those a video. I could have been. No, 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 no. I'm creating a video and I'm chopping okay. the video up into smaller gotcha. clips. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah but then it's the same thing. It's, okay. it's the same thing. You, you can so, just use that video for TikTok. So, so you, you get, you get nice with it then though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right now I got close to nine thousand followers on oh. um on TikTok now. So you are gotta get to a thousand followers in order to get a uh, link in your bio. So once you go there and get it, because it doesn't have a, a link there to kind of get people off of TikTok. Okay. Um, but once you so once you get to that number, I don't know what you get at ten thousand. I think at like twenty thousand, you get a playlist. Uh, where you can put your um, videos in playlists for people. So it is a little different. Uh, okay. Some people say that TikTok is more authentic and where Instagram is a little bit more polished. Sure. And a little bit more. Um, I can see that. Glamorous, if you want. Um, but uh, I mean, they're all trying to get people to stay on their platform more. Right. Um, and Instagram and Facebook. I mean, it's, it's more, the, um, as you said, the algorithm has changed so much that now they're really pay to play type um, fields versus uh, TikTok. And they say LinkedIn, even though I haven't had much success as far as with LinkedIn, but um, the organic reach is the best with LinkedIn and TikTok. Um, Cause really? you can have, okay. cause you can have, like you said, you can have one video and it can, it can reach a hundred thousand people just like that. Um, where they they want you to pay for it because it's more established yeah. with Facebook and, and uh, Instagram. So, you know, and I can tell you too, um, from an organic standpoint, I, you know, they say it's it's really hard to grow organically on Instagram these days, right? But the one way that I did see a lot of uptick too, I forgot to mention earlier, was stuff like this, right? When I go on podcasts or remember, when, I, I, I guess some people still use Clubhouse, right? I, I haven't been on it. I was on it like when the wave was really hot. I was jumping right, on Clubhouse, too. but I. I kind of right. faded out, um, but I would go on Clubhouse and talk. And if it was somebody else would invite me to their room, or if somebody else would invite me on an Instagram Live or a Facebook Live, or somebody would just at me or tag me, um, or I would be on a podcast or just be on someone, you know, any type of engagement I was on somebody else's platform, that would always bring me a lot of organic growth because everybody would be like, who is that guy? Or yeah, where do right. I reach you? And everybody would jump on and, and, and start following me. So um yeah that was really that was another way that was really cool but um that's interesting that you say that because i, I think linkedin is definitely more business you know focused business centric so i can see how you can still grow organically on there if you if you are putting out decent content for people and because tiktok is very authentic and you know you're creating what you want people to see and you're basically it's just a, it's just everybody has a chance to be a creator a creator right. now right right that. so that's what's really cool about that. So I can see more organic growth coming from there. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm sit down and take some time and get it. I will, because <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I know it's, it's super engaging and super powerful these days. Right, because when when a platform first comes out, they want to get people away from YouTube. They want to get people away from Facebook and Instagram and the other more uh, established platforms. So what they give you is they give you exposure. Right. Versus these other platforms that have the people already. They don't have to give you exposure because you already there. 
So right. it was like, all right, if you want your your um, post to be seen, you got to pay. Versus how Snapchat was. I never got on Snapchat, but um, how Snapchat was and TikTok, it's a it's new now. I mean, even though it's kind of leveling off, but um, it's new. So they they want your attention. How do you get people's attention? Get them more exposure. And they give right. me more exposure. And um, hey, they they got me there because my stuff definitely gets more play there than it gets on um, Facebook. And you got all this. You got 5,000 friends on Facebook and your stuff only gets solved by one or two people. I, I always find that really weird on Facebook, right? Like, how does that, how does, you know, all these people not see certain posts, right? But that's just how the algorithm works. You just, nowadays, you're just getting lucky if people are scrolling and you pop up in there and they're scrolling. Right, right, man. Right. Yeah. All right, man. Well, um, the last man closing this out, man, because we, we definitely gonna have to have a part two, man. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Anytime. Is there any uh, hacks that you can give uh, the real estate agent? What I do is I, I like to give the real estate agents hacks that they can take um, right. and implement as soon as they get off the podcast. So any social media hacks that you have as far as the, so people can get their stuff seen? Absolutely. Absolutely. So number one, I think one of the biggest secrets that people don't utilize is Google, right? We started getting to this right before we, okay. we jumped on. But if you don't have a Google for business page, you're missing out, right? Because that Google for business page will drive people to your Instagram. That Google for business page will drive people to like, you know, because I was number 47 on Property Spark, number one in New Jersey uh, two years in a row, that pops up on Google. So of course, when people Google me, my Google for business page comes up where you fill it out and you have all your information on there. People can contact you directly, but it also has those articles that back you up, right? It, then it'll have your Instagram. You know, Kenyon Hunter is on Instagram as Real Estate Agent 007. People will come there. So don't underestimate the power of a Google for business page. The other thing is, and I kind of mentioned this earlier, is most people are focused on creating content and just putting anything out there. One, create intentional content, right? So be very intentional about your content and create content that has value. People don't care about the numbers people don't care about you know house under contract wrong. they really don't right other agents are the only people that really understand the impact that, that makes or what it means right and to, to other agents a lot of time we're just like you're bragging <laughs> basically right <laughs> right who cares right i right. care about my money not yours so um but have, be intentional about your content so if it's something you love be intentional about sharing what you love um bring value to people right so people do find value in real estate hacks, right? If you're bringing value, for instance, saying things like, you know, um, I know that this certain neighborhood has a bunch of homes that were recently bought by an investor. So keep a lookout because there'll probably be some awesome newly remodeled homes coming in the next six to 12 months, right? Those are value based, you know, uh, posts or just valuable information that somebody looking at that neighborhood might want to know, right? Well, thanks for telling me. And they may reach out to you and say, hey, you seem to know a lot about the neighborhood. Can you keep me posted when you know you you see some of these homes starting to get close to completion, or when you see them getting close to being on the market, right? So, be very um, intentional about your posts, about your social media, and always try to create value. And then, the third thing, what I mentioned earlier, is make sure you spend an equal amount of time engaging on other people's social mm. media, right? Mm. Nobody nobody is more excited when, cause I know even me, right? If somebody comments on my page or on a post, I see that comment. I have no choice but to see it. I'm not a celebrity. So it's not like I got, you know, I'm not, I'm not Kanye where I got, you know, 10 million people <laughs> comment, right? right? I see every comment. And most of the time, if somebody comments, oh man, bro, great post or, Hey, love that house. Oh, that staircase is beautiful. I click on their name, right? And I usually follow everybody back, right? So if you follow me, I typically, I'm typically going to follow you back. Um, and the only reason I don't follow you back is if I go on your page and you have like zero posts or mm. your page is just very um, not pleasing to the eyes, right? For some strange reason. Maybe you just got a bunch of vulgarness or whatever. You know, right. I'm not into it, right? Um, but when you engage, people see it and people are going to click on your page. And if they like what they see, they're going to follow you back. They're going to follow you and they're going to want to stay pay close attention to your page. So it, like I always say, look, spend 30 minutes a day on social media, right? At least, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, some people spend all day on social media, but look, 
for your business and to be intentional and to bring value, spend 30 minutes a day on your social media, but also spend 30 minutes a day on other people's social media, right? right. Spend 30 minutes a day looking at Khalid's um, TikToks and commenting and liking, right? And checking them out because that people are going to return that to you. They're going to come back and say, okay, let me check this page out. Wow. I like that comment. That was cool. That was nice, right? Stay positive, give people good vibes. And they'll probably back. So those are the top three things that I would say. Those are the top three hacks that I would say would will help. Um, because also when you engage with other people, let's say that person has a big following, right? Then you may tap into their following, right? And you tap into their following and their, you know, 10,000, 20,000, 30, 40, 50,000 followers might start looking at you too when you're commenting. Because as they're looking at that post of that person they follow who's an influencer or who has a big following and they see you comment like, wow, I love that. They might look at your profile picture like, who's this? Boom. Oh, man, I like this page. Real, real positive. I dig it. Right. So those are those are some keys, bro. Yeah, I definitely think um, plugging into other people's network is kind of missed as far as just people looking to grow their Instagram following just in general. A lot of people think, oh, I got to do it organically. I got to do it organically or they may even pay for it. But mm -hmm. plugging into somebody else's uh, tribe, I think, is definitely a hack that everybody out there should to everybody out there should take advantage of. Well. Um, Kenyan, all for all the realtors out there, if you do have, um, if you do want to reach out to uh, Kenyan, tell them where they can find you at. Yeah, absolutely. So Instagram is one of my main platforms at Real Estate Agent 007. Um, I was just looking on my phone for TikTok because I am going to get my TikTok game down. So my TikTok is, let me see, my profile. I am K Hunter 007 on TikTok, LinkedIn Kenyan Hunter, uh, Facebook is Evolution Ad Group RE. So, uh, yeah, I look forward to link with everybody. Like I said, I try to follow everybody back. Uh, you can DM me, ask me any questions you want. And, and, and you know, you want to know more about these hacks, you know, uh, talk to me or Khalid if you want to, you know, be with the number one group at EXP, doing Thank big you. things, growing faster than anybody. The Wolfpack is where it's at. So, you know, reach out to Khalid. He, you know, we would be more than happy to help you scale your career because once you reach out to Khalid, guess what? You have access to all of us now, right? We're, and we're like, what, 1,800 deep across across yeah. the globe right now at the Wolfpack? Yeah. Um, so, you, you know, always reach out to us there. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, I look forward to always connecting, man. Anytime, you know, I come on the show and add some value to your audience, man, let me know. You know, I'm more than happy to do it for you, brother. You know, I appreciate you having me on. Cool, man. All right, y'all. Well, to the next time, thank you for watching the Social Media for Real Estate Agents podcast.